I've made many videos on prototype Apple devices. However, a question that I've been asked lately is, what even are prototypes? Where do they come from? What are the stages? Etc. Today, I decided to make a video to enlighten you, give you a detailed look at prototypes, and hopefully make you more knowledgeable about Apple prototypes in general. To quickly answer the first question, which is, what is an Apple prototype? A brief explanation is a device that was made before the proper manufacture date of a device. A device that was used by Apple in one way or another to develop the finished product of whatever prototype you have. These are often mistakenly sold by recyclers and the such who don't know what these devices actually are. You can't exactly just go on Apple.com and purchase one of these. You would have either had to be an Apple engineer or a select amount of third parties that Apple distributed prototypes to to even get your hands on one of these. But now, let's look at the developmental operating systems that can commonly be found on iOS prototypes. The first and common developmental operating system that people first think about when thinking of iOS prototypes is non-UI, also known as Switchboard. This operating system is not designed to be put onto a device that is going to be used as a daily driver. The main purpose of this operating system is automation and factory testing. Things like dropping a device 20 times and making sure that all the hardware still works, or like the phone in the video, intentionally crashing the baseband chip and making sure that the data on it can still be read. When people imagine a prototype device of any nature, this is probably one of the first things that come to mind. A device strictly made to test the hardware, and that's pretty much it. Out of the two developmental operating systems that there are, this is the more common one. Definitely not to be underappreciated if you find a device running it, but now let's look at the rarer one, Developmental iOS, also known as internal UI, is an operating system that's designed to be used on a device that will be used as a daily driver. Pretty much any device running internal UI is instantly amplified in its value. It's really like normal iOS, but just with a bunch of developmental features and apps installed. But because it is installed on far fewer devices, it makes it extremely desirable for collectors to get a device running the software. Now that we've discussed the two main operating systems that developmental devices can run, let's look at the actual stages of prototypes. There are many, 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 many stages that Apple uses on prototypes. Shown on screen is a diagram that I made that outlines the main stages of prototyping. Right now it probably just looks like a bunch of random strung together letters, but don't worry. I'll go through them with you and explain examples of each. Demonstrators and mock-ups. The very first official stage. You ever have an idea and think to yourself, wow, that's amazing. That's basically the entire idea behind the stage. You never start with a finished product. You don't even start with a functional product when you're trying to think of something new. And that's the exact idea that the stage is based on. You don't have anything functional. You just have a general idea of whatever you want to make to look like. Unfortunately, it's pretty hard to verify any device of this stage because it could just be called off as a fake. And because devices of this stage don't typically have any hardware inside them, they aren't as valued by collectors. But it's definitely one of the craziest stages. But now, let's go on to the next stage. Proto the first stage that involves functional hardware. Proto devices are the real first combination of taking a design that you think you want and shoving hardware into that design. To say that a few things might go wrong would be a complete understatement. It's estimated that around 40% of proto devices ever made will fail due to hardware malfunction. And if you ever manage to obtain one of these highly sought after devices that is damaged in a way, and you think, oh, I'm just gonna buy a new screen, or oh, I'm just gonna buy a new power button cable. Good fucking luck, as it's almost guaranteed that every component that's in this prototype has had at least some kind of hardware revision. So either the connector's not gonna fit, 
or it's just not going to work. And to add insult to injury, most of these devices are either wiped or were never running an operating system in the first place. So proto devices that have an operating system which is almost guaranteed to be switchboard is a prototype that is perhaps most sought after by collectors. So when all the hardware madness is completed, let's look at the stage that it transitions to. EVT, both the earlier and later stage. Engineering validation testing, also known as EVT for short, has two stages that are distinct enough to be separated into two groups, the numerical EVT and the alphabetical EVT. EVT a number, which usually ranges from about one to four, is the first time that real tests are actually being performed on a product. No longer is it just about seeing ideas and maybe making something that works. It's about making something that reliably works. With that being said, of course, EVT is basically the engineering prototype stage. It's validating the hardware and making sure that no hardware related errors happen in software. Most of this testing is done in a lab environment and the numerical EVT is often when the most problems arise. Now the alphabetical EVT is actually quite different. Despite both stages being of EVT descent, this is often a backtrack on when you've tried to do another stage, it could even be the manufacturing process at this point, but something really badly messed up. Currently on screen is an EVT iPod Touch 2nd generation that was actually made halfway through the device's life cycle. This was due to an unpatchable boot ROM exploit for the iPod Touch 2nd generation, so Apple had to go back to the drawing board and go back to EVT to patch it. Now, let's look at the next stage, DVT, both the earlier and later stages. So you think you have something that might be the final design. So now all you have to do is refine the hardware, right? Well, not quite. DVT devices usually closely resemble the retail hardware that will be purchased by consumers, maybe with a few hardware changes on the inside. And if you're thinking, oh, it's almost finished, right? Well, here's DVT1, DVT2, DVT3, and DVT4. Yeah, not quite done yet. DVT stands for Design Validation Testing, which is all about ensuring that the selected design is optimal. There are many stages associated with DVT, but the one that I'll talk about right now is DOE, or Design of Experiments. Basically, DOE is used when a hardware change is made, but it's not significant enough to go back to EVT. An example might be if a different kind of glue was used to hold down the screen, or if maybe the speaker mesh was made a little bit thinner or thicker. DVT devices are also given to people who aren't Apple. You may be thinking, why would Apple give a prototype to someone who isn't them? But there definitely are reasons why they would do this. First of all, they need to get approved by the FCC to actually distribute this device and sell it in the United States and in many other countries. So if they don't get FCC approval, they can't sell the device. Also, devices with cellular data need to be insured to work in other countries. So Apple will sometimes give DVT phones loaded with an operating system called Carrier OS, which is essentially a stripped down version of internal UI, for these carriers to make sure that their network works. And then return the prototype, of course. Generally, there are a lot more DVT devices than there would be, say, Proto or EVT devices. So this stage is quite uncommon, but not the rarest. DVT devices often run switchboard but can run internal UI, which makes them very desirable to collectors. In terms of the numerical and alphabetical DVTs, it's pretty much the same situation as it is with EVTs, so I won't repeat it. But DVT is probably the last stage that prototype collectors really care about, as beyond DVT, the hardware gets very, very, very close, if not the exact same, as production. Speaking of which, let's go into the next stage. PVT. So at this point, the development of the actual hardware of a device is finished. 
but now it's time to take your quote unquote final design and try to see if any errors happen when you try to create the device in a mass production setting. PVT, or product validation testing, isn't so much focused on developing the hardware of the device itself, but the manufacturing procedures to make the device in an efficient manner and make it work. Manufacturing issues are the main problem at this stage because if you have something where you know if you make just a few devices, it will work. What happens if you try to make that one design 100, 1000, 10,000, 100,000 times? Will all of them work? This particular prototype stage is so close to production that there's actually been cases of Apple using PVT parts in production computers. If you've searched for the term Apple prototype on eBay, you've probably come across these quote unquote PVT iBooks. What they actually are are just PVT boards that were shipped in production iBooks. While the explanation for this isn't quite clear, it's most likely just a cost saving measure because PVT boards are almost one to one with production ones. With that being said, normal PVT devices usually do run switchboard, but because they are essentially normal iOS devices at this point, people often reset them in iTunes, which completely ruins the value. And generally, because of the PVT stage itself and what it's based on, these just aren't as rare. The only real exception to this rule are PVT E devices, which is a substage of PVT. Typically, PVT E devices are used by Apple employees as daily drivers. And these types of devices often run internal UI, which as I stated before, is very valued by collectors. But even PVT E devices can be restored to normal iOS. But once all the tooling and manufacturing issues are all panned out, let's look at what the final stage is. It is worth mentioning though, that everything after PVT is what I would call quote unquote prototype, because it's not officially prototype, as by the next stage, the product has already been released to the public, but they still are developmental Apple devices, so let's get right into it. The final stage, MP. The MP stage, which stands for mass production, is when all development work is finished and Apple is commercially selling the product. Every single retail product that Apple sells commercially can be considered an MP device, but for our purposes, we won't include those. The most common MP devices that escape Apple, such as the one being shown on screen, are factory failed test units. Essentially, it's just a device where Apple tried running some tests and, I don't know, maybe the back camera didn't work or the accelerometer was just not working properly. And because of whatever minor issue it had, it was scheduled to be thrown out. The most common condition to find MP devices that were either factory rejects or just testing units to make sure that all the manufacturing processes were still working as they intended are usually found as just motherboards, as say if an iPhone only has a bad logic board where something just on it doesn't work quite right. It would be highly uneconomical to also throw out the screen, the battery, the charging port, etc. But it is worth mentioning that this is both the most common stage and the lowest value stage. As even though devices like factory rejects can on occasion run switchboard, the hardware itself is identical to normal hardware. Unfortunately, scammers often take MP devices that do run switchboard, put them in fake housings and try to sell them to people who don't really know a lot about Apple collecting and sell them for thousands more than what the device really should sell for. I will eventually come around to making a video about said fake devices, as I mean if there's a market where people can make money, people will fake anything, including something as obscure as Apple prototypes. But that's a video for another time. I want to thank you all for watching my video and I hope you learned a thing or two about Apple prototypes. And if you want to see some other prototypes, check out my other videos and maybe even consider leaving a like and then subscribing if you want to as that really motivates me to create more and more content. Anyways, I hope you really enjoyed this week's video and I hope you have a good one.